So my name is Adha Sabinav. I run Deep Root Linux. Uh, we are a 14-year-old free software business and we specialize in developing products and solutions around free and open source software. So we have our own products which we build as free software and distribute and support and we also service uh, generic uh, open source and free software products. With regards to how startups can use uh, free software uh, and how they should, how and whether they should release their work as free software or not, what licenses they should use, what things they should be careful about and so on, I had four scenarios to outline uh, which would sort of put each startup uh, at a certain level of uh, contribution or usage with regards to free software. So by default, I think today most most startups use free and open source software in you know in so many ways. Uh, it could be about the software which is which powers their product, the way they host their product, uh, the way they uh, provide services on it. So that essentially is a problem which has been very well solved. Uh, free software today is mostly the default choice for anyone who wants to develop a software product or. Uh, provide any sort of application service uh, on the internet. Uh, and of course, there are so many advantages to gain out of using free software. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can uh, reuse what people have built. You can add value on top of that. And you can focus on exactly that one problem that you have to solve. You don't have to solve all the problems that other people have already solved so well. So that is the first level of engagement that a startup would have with the open source community. Next level, when we want to get into contribution, uh, is when you look at the whole body of software that you've built, and now you look at little pieces that you think you can draw out, you can generalize, and you can release independently. Which means that those pieces stop being very specific to your own product, and you generalize them such that they can be used by anyone for whatever else that they're trying to do. Now, why would you do this? Well, I would do this because a certain amount of pride in writing software that other developers and other users would use. There is certain amount of community reputation to acquire through that process. And maybe because I also feel indebted for having built my entire product and solution on the work of so many other people. So while I'm always uh, innovating on the edge, you know, I'm, I'm using the work of others and innovating on the edge, I could also contribute back to that same pool in whatever little way I can to increase the body of uh, free and open source software that's available to other users and developers for their, for doing their job uh, in a much better manner. So that's another level of engagement where you draw in small parts and you release them as isolated parts. A lot of very large uh, companies do that, Twitter does that, Facebook does that. Uh, uh, so many people do it. Those parts you can't really look at how they're using it. Uh, but those are isolated parts that you can reuse and uh, build your stuff on. A third thing would be to extract uh, frameworks out of things that you build. So Ruby on Rails came out as a framework that was drawn out of a very large web application. Uh, typically these are fairly large bodies of software. Uh, these are not small libraries that others can reuse, but these are things that others would build a lot of uh, software on. And finally, uh, I would come to the most, uh, the, the most challenging way of, of contributing to free and open source software, which is releasing your entire product and making the entire product available to users under a free software license. And there are, again, a whole lot of people who do it. Uh, Own Cloud does it, Sogo does it, Nuxio does it. Uh, you have uh, Fat Free CRM, uh, Sugar CRM, well, there's a whole lot of people who release the entire so software that they've built under a free software license, and then they also build a profitable business out of it. Uh, then the challenge is about ensuring that you have uh, followed licenses of softwares that you have built your product on, that uh, you have put the right sort of license on your software, uh, I mean, it full so that it fulfills your business goal as well. And the way now these people build uh, businesses out of software that is essentially free and open source is by providing services, deployment assistance, customizations, consultancy, hosting, uh, and online services, and you know things like that. 
because even if you give the software to a lay person, they can't really do too much with it. Uh, deploying the software, maintaining it, keeping the server that it runs on up and running, those are very important tasks. Those are also very challenging tasks. And everyone can't employ skilled people to do that for them. So they always need someone else to do it on their behalf, and that's where the business uh, element uh, really comes in. So if a startup is using or contributing to free software, the license they choose and the mode in which they want to contribute would depend on the scale and the type of contribution that they're making. So if you're releasing an entire product, uh, a very good license to use could be the Affero GPL v3 or the GPL v3 itself. If you are uh, releasing bits of it and you don't mind people making those bits as a part of other proprietary solutions, you could use the LGPL license, you could use an MIT license, you could use a BSG license. So there are very popular licenses like that that people generally use. Uh, certain licenses are very popular in certain communities, like the Ruby community uses uh, the MIT license for almost all the gems and for, for the Ruby language compiler itself. And hence, those licenses become a default choice in those communities. Uh, so my, my view is that depending on the scale of contribution, you choose the license, you choose the method in which you want to distribute the software, uh, the way you want to package it, the way you want to uh, make it available to users. And finally, one should always know the reason one is doing it. I mean, I'm, am I doing it because I feel it's the because of ethics? Am I doing it because I feel it's a good marketing move? Am I doing it because I want to hire developers who can who could work for me for free as a, by, by contributing to the software that I've released? Could it be that I'm looking at feedback or reputation among my peers? It's good to know where you're coming from, on what basis you've taken a decision to release your software or whatever parts of it, and hence choose license and the mode of distribution and so on.